Hello and welcome to another episode of A Brief History. Today's episode, Steven Universe. Ready, set, wait. What's that sound? Win the fight and then go out pizzas. We da 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 are the crystal gems. Always. Uh. Yo. I'm Michaela Dietz. Uh, I voice Amethyst on Steven Universe. Oh, well, uh, hi. Nice to meet you. If I can ask what you're doing here? Well, good, sir. I've seen some of your brief history of things. I heard you were doing one on Steven Universe, so I figured I'd crash the party. You know, spice it up a little. Come on, gotta have that spice in your life. Ready, set, go! Well, that's my thing. I usually... <sighs> Never mind. April 5th, 2010. Following a kind of awkward period in the company's history, children's TV company Cartoon Network premieres the first episode of their new show, Pendleton Ward's Adventure Time. This show turned into a runaway success that helped usher in a new era for the Cartoon Network channel, but all of that's a story for another day. For now, we focus on a member of the Adventure Time production team, Rebecca Sugar. Yep, Rebecca Senpai. Yep, sure. Mm, cool. Anyway, having joined the Adventure Time team as a storyboard revisionist in 2009, Rebecca Sugar eventually found herself being promoted to storyboard artist and writer, where she helped create many episodes of the show between seasons two and five. And she was even responsible for several fan favorite moments in the show, including Marceline's Fry song from her first ever episode, It Came From The Nidosphere. However, Rebecca Sugar had ambitions beyond just Adventure Time, wishing to create a cartoon of her own. So when the then vice president of comedy animation at Cartoon Network put out an open call to the staff for pilot ideas, Rebecca Sugar took her opportunity to speak up and begin her pitch. Sugar explained her concept for a comedy and drama show she called Steven Universe, about a boy named Steven and his family of aliens known as the Crystal Gems. Garnet, Square Mom, Pearl, Bird Mom, and Amethyst. Small Mom. Aiming to mix the worlds of both fantasy and reality, Steven Universe would follow the story of the Crystal Gems as they fought to save the Earth from various interstellar threats. All the while Steven, a half-human half-gem hybrid learns to utilize his powers, help the gems, and do other totally normal things that come with growing up. I just turned all my fingers into cats! Following her pitch, Steven Universe was approved for development, and Rebecca Sugar was able to begin working on a pilot episode in between her work on Adventure Time. And her efforts culminated in late 2012, when the Steven Universe pilot was completed and presented to Cartoon Network. Featuring the voice work of Zach Callison as Steven, Estelle as Garnet, Dee Dee Magno Hall as Pearl, and Michaela Dietz as Amethyst. What up, nerds? Shardy squad! And while in some ways this pilot was very different than the show it eventually became, it still boasted a little bit of everything that we've come to expect from Steven Universe. Singing, monsters, cool character designs, some kooky sci-fi fantasy stuff, and of course, Amethyst causing pretty much the entire conflict. <sighs> you destroy one underwater sea shrine and suddenly you're a liability? Not cool, man. Besides, Amethyst doesn't always cause conflict. It's usually Steven. Cartoon Network liked Rebecca Sugar's pilot, greenlighting Steven Universe for full production and marking Rebecca Sugar's departure from working full-time on Adventure Time full-time. Time. Adventure. Time. Full. Adventure. Time. <clears throat> so Steven Universe was now on the road to its first ever broadcast. And in order to help market and build hype for the show, Cartoon Network uploaded the full pilot episode online on May 21st, 2013, and even exhibited it at that year's San Diego Comic Con. And considering the popularity of her work on Adventure Time, I think it's safe to say that many were interested to see what Rebecca Sugar and her crew had cooking. So on November 4th, 2013, Cartoon Network officially premiered Steven Universe, but only after giving the show quite the extensive makeover. Mm-hmm. Garnet's hair grew, Amethyst stitched her fanny pack, and Pearl got biker shorts. Bah, bah. The show premiered with two episodes of what was slated to be its first 26-episode season. Well, I say 26, but only 10 days after the show premiered, the network actually added an extra 26 episodes. Meaning that this one season of a brand new show ran for 52 freaking episodes between November of 2013 and March of 2015. I mean, yeah, each episode was only about 11 minutes long, but that's still a lot of faith to put into season one of a brand new original series. Adventure Time's first season only had half that many episodes, but luckily Steven Universe absolutely delivered. Within just its first few episodes, it offered bright and colorful art, catchy original music, lighthearted humor, surprisingly effective drama, and even a good bit of intrigue. From the very beginning, the show had a deep lore running through it that was only expanding with each episode, drawing in a wealth of curious viewers who were 
dying to learn more about this new world that they were being given. And all of this combined made Steven Universe Cartoon Network's newest smash hit. In fact, the show was such a success that Cartoon Network didn't really even wait before jumping into its next season. The show was renewed for a season two by July 25th, 2014, and that second season began literally the day after the season one finale premiered. And from this point forward, Steven Universe only grew and grew and grew. Today, in 2017, the show was in the middle of its fifth season and shows no signs of slowing down, pulling in a consistent viewership of well over a million, sometimes even two million views per episode. The show has gained a massive fan base over the years, and not just among its target audience. Much like Adventure Time before it, Steven Universe has become incredibly popular with kids, adults, and Thomas Sanders for various reasons. The show has a definite timeless feel, aiming to tell strong stories rather than just pander to a potential audience. Characters have fully fleshed out personalities and backstories, music and art are full of passion and effort, and the show tackles all sorts of mature themes, including depression, loss, living up to the world's expectations, and even gender and sexuality. Things that you would have never seen discussed in a mainstream kids cartoon only 10 years prior, let alone handled in such respectable and intelligent ways. And none of this has gone unrecognized. Beyond its passionate and dedicated fan community, Steven Universe has also been nominated for several major awards, including Primetime Emmys. So with all of this success, naturally, Steven Universe would quickly go on to see all sorts of merchandise to suck fans' wallets dry. There is no shortage of Steven Universe clothes, accessories, mugs, Funko Pop vinyl figures, iPhone cases, and more. However, at the time of this video, Steven Universe has only seen very limited home video releases, especially in the US. None of the show's four complete seasons have received box set Blu-ray releases in North America. Even though fellow Cartoon Network hits Adventure Time and Regular Show have seen several DVD and Blu-ray box sets. But that's okay, we have Steven Universe Monopoly instead, and that's a big deal. They don't just give those to everyone you know, you gotta be something really important to get your own Monopoly game. Things like Pokemon, M and M's, and... Raisins. I think I got a little lost here. Yo, I thought you were a professional. <sighs> this kind of thing never happens on Jaden animations. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All I was trying to get at was that Steven Universe is very popular, and it's actually begun to spread out beyond just the TV show. Since the show's premiere, the world has seen several Steven Universe companion books, including comics, art books, and even storybooks by Rebecca Sugar herself. And on top of this, the show has also seen a few video game adaptations, the most prominent of which was 2015 Steven Universe Universe Attack the Light for iOS and Android devices. Attack the Light was a mobile turn-based RPG by Grumpy Face Studios that was actually incredibly well received. And in March of 2017, it was announced that a sequel to this game known as Steven Universe Save the Light was slated for release on consoles later in the year. And I mean, look at this! It's like Steven Universe meets Paper Mario and it looks awesome! I know dude, I need this in my life! Do you see this 3D version of Beach City? Right? Oh, I wanna Eat it! Wait, are we being paid to say any of this? Not a cent. Mm, cool. Steven Universe is easily one of the most important Western cartoons of the last decade. From its masterful storytelling and memorable characters to its striking pastel art direction and wonderful soundtrack, Steven Universe just hits all the marks. Very few cartoons are as widely appealing, artistic, and progressive as Steven Universe. Adventure Time may have come first and may technically be the better known show overall, but Steven Universe is no slouch as the show has already begun to solidify itself as a new cartoon. Cartoon Network classic, joining the ranks of Powerpuff Girls, Samurai Jack, and more. But even among those classics, I think Steven Universe is special. The show and its contemporaries definitely mark a shift in how we approach both making and watching cartoons. And considering the impact the show has had in only its first few years on the air, I think it's safe to say that Steven Universe has all the makings to become one of the defining television shows of this generation. Thanks for watching, guys. DFTBA. Whew, well, that went all right, all things considered. Uh, anything more to add, Michaela? Michaela? Okay, you just... You keep doing you then. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching my Steven Universe Brief History. I hope you liked it. I've never actually covered a cartoon series on this show before, so if you guys liked it, 
please let me know. I would love to give other cartoons the brief history treatment, but Steven Universe is my favorite, so it got to go first. And a massive, massive thank you to Michaela Dietz for joining me on this episode and adding that nondescript spice to things. If you'd like to see more of Michaela, you can click here to check out her YouTube channel, or you can catch her on Steven Universe as Amethyst. Also, big thanks to my bud Greg Zilla for all the awesome character art and animation in this episode. And don't forget, if you want to keep updated as to when I upload new episodes of A Brief History, then please feel free to subscribe to my channel. And I think that's about it, so I'll say it again, guys. Thanks for watching, and DFTBA.